I was turned on to them by Chris Osgood, who told me that there was a band that was doing a lot of Johnny Thunders material, and I was a huge Thunders Dolls fan, so that was my first uh, taste of them going down to the Longhorn and seeing them. That was in the late summer of 1979. I met Grant first and then was introduced to Bob a lot at 20, 15, 20 minutes later. In fact, I carried equipment in for them and I hadn't even known them for more than about 10 minutes. They combine velocity with melody, with aggression, with despair, yearning. I mean, they wrapped up everything that was cool about rock and roll, even from the beginning, and they made it all their own, they made it all their own deal. So, pretty much from then onward, I was uh, aboard the up and down Husker Du ship. I started as a, as a sound person in the 7th Street entry, spinning records and doing sound for bands. That's where I had my initial seat of the pants sound soundboard experience. Started working for a number of out of town and local bands. Kept working with Husker Du and the replacements both sort of on and off before they were really touring. And then later in the year, started to work with uh, their Reflex record label, which led to the first Husker single. So that was basically all of all of 1980, I guess. How did you get involved in Reflex? By accident, I got involved with. Reflex. Well, no, it just sort of I slid my bridge. That was just sort of a bridge into doing it. And then we started putting out the compilations. It just sort of all snowballed, where I was just you know. I was the only one that could really do stupid shit for them because they were getting too busy, you know? So, you know, get the mail, go to the office. We had a little office space at that time. So, you know, run through the mail, make sure there's no checks for any merchandise that were in there. That was one of my duties. And then gradually I phased out of working. I got too burnt out working for just too many bands. So I just sort of ended up working on and off for Hooskers until they got a, a road sound person. That's kind of when I, when I stepped back and ended up being, being an office man instead of, because I wasn't really ready to go on the road for an extended period of time. And I knew that, so um, uh, my, actually, my last duty, my, my, my last working relationship with, with Hooskers when we recorded the Spin Radio concert in 85, I mean, that was the last actual sound job that I did for them. I helped their their audio person. I was just sitting in the booth cueing leads and stuff while they were playing because the guy didn't know where the leads were. So we were working with the spin engineer. I was, I was just an advisor basically, but I mean, that was the last thing that I did on a, an audio duty for them.